just to remind ourselves, so public goods are, in a sense, the opposite of private goods. A private good is defined as a good which um, can you can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of it if you uh, don't own it or don't have rights to it, and also that it diminishes as it is consumed. A public good, on the other hand, is a good which is non-excludable and non-diminishable, or also called non-rival. So this, this is a good where uh, if it is supplied or comes into existence, no one can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of it. And also, as more people use an existing public good, that good doesn't diminish in quantity with use. So it's not merely something which is provided by the government. That's not what we mean by a public good. Our definition of a public good is this technical definition of something which is non-excludable and non-diminishable. So let's look at some examples briefly. So we can think of public goods which are created. Um, they have to be brought into existence by some kind of production process, so to speak. Uh, so we can think of national defence, for example. This is the classic example going back a couple of hundred years. So if you think of national defence, it's um, non-excludable. So if a, for example, if a baby is born within the boundaries of Australia, then the baby is automatically enjoying the national defence of Australia. It can't be excluded from that, while ever it remains within the borders anyway. And it's also non-diminishable. So another baby is born, there's not less national defence than there was before. Of course, there is some defined quantity of national defence, but just because another baby is born or another person uh, is within the borders, it doesn't mean that there is less national defence. The same is true in principle for the justice system. No one can be excluded from it as long as you, know, you fit the definitions of uh, someone who would be um, brought within the justice system. Um, and uh, as there are more people, for example, within the society, there's not less of a justice system, so to speak. Streetlights is another classic example. So uh, if there are streetlights in your street, then people can't be excluded from enjoying the benefits of the streetlights. All right, all you have to do is walk down the street and you enjoy the benefits of them. Uh, but they don't diminish as more people walk down the street. There's not less light available for others just because more people look at the street light, for example. And so on and so forth. For those other examples too. Traffic, light, traffic signs, same story. Free-to-air TV, non-excludable. Right? You just turn on the television and you get, gain access to free-to-air TV. And it doesn't diminish. The more people who watch free-to-air TV, it doesn't mean there's less free-to-air TV available to other people. Uh, and some information on the internet falls within the same category as this too, much like free-to-air TV. There are also a few naturally occurring public goods, such as sunlight, for example. So uh, no one can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of sunlight. Right? assuming they haven't been locked up in a prison or something like that. Uh, and there's not less sunlight available just because more people go outside and go sunbaking. It doesn't diminish as more people use the sunlight. And of course, there's kind of in-between cases. So if we think of national parkland, for example, in, to, in some respects, this is a naturally occurring public good. Uh, people can't be excluded from enjoying the benefits of it, and it doesn't the amount of parkland doesn't diminish as more people use the uh, parkland. However, um, in, a, in a different sense, it is created uh, in that it might be a legislated zoned area which is classified as national parkland. And there are rules and regulations over the conduct 
uh, of the use of that parkland. Uh, so in, in that sense, it's something like a naturally occurring phenomenon, like sunlight, but in, in another respect it's created, in that there's legislation which guarantees its existence. Uh, we should also note that public goods can be transformed. So something that might start out as a public good can be turned into a common good. A common good is a good which is diminishable. As more people use it, it diminishes in quantity. But it's non-excludable. That is, as long as it comes into existence, everyone can get access to it. So if we think of a beach, for example... Uh, this could become a common good. It might start out a public good, but it might become a common good. Um, say, for example, Bondi Beach. As the population of Sydney increased and increased and increased and more and more people went to Bondi Beach, in a sense, there was less beach space available for others. The amount of beach available to the next person who comes along will be less than the previous people who uh, entered onto the beach. And similarly for clean air. Clean air, previously, if you go back to textbooks 50 years ago, clean air was classified as a public good. But today we might think of it as a common good. That is, no one can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of clean air if it exists. However, we do know that clean air is now used to, for, as a kind of a dumping ground, as a sink, so to speak. And it's so the amount of clean air does actually diminish now as more and more people and factories and cars use that clean air as a dump. So it becomes a common good, non-excludable, but diminishable. Also, public goods can become quasi-public goods. So sporting fields, for example... Many, many moons ago, if you went back a hundred years in Australia, sporting fields were regarded as public goods. No one could be prevented from enjoying the benefits of a sporting field. Uh, and they didn't really diminish. Uh, as more people used sporting fields, it wasn't less available for others uh, because the population was relatively small. But over time, what has happened is that sporting fields have been privatised, so to speak. Um, so what you find is that although the number of there's a given number of sporting fields, they don't diminish as more people use the sporting fields. Uh, nonetheless, you can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of them now. You have to pay tickets to get into sporting fields, for example. Pay TV is another example, where you get a transformation from free-to-air TV to pay TV. In the case of pay TV, this is a quasi-public good because as more people watch pay TV, there's not less available for others. However, you can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of it. And the same with, in with the internet. So some news sites, for example, which were previously free public goods, that is non-excludable, non-diminishable, they have set up paywalls so that although the number of people who look at a news website uh, as that increases, it doesn't decrease the amount of news available, so to speak, to look at, but you can be excluded from enjoying the benefits unless you pay a subscription fee. Why do free markets fail to supply the efficient, that is the allocatively efficient, quantity of public goods? Well, the reason for that comes down to the non uh, sorry comes down to the non-excludability property of public goods. Um, because no one can be excluded if a public good comes into existence, since no one can be excluded from enjoying the benefits of the public good, people might think to themselves, well I will simply free ride on the purchasing decisions of someone else. Um, so rather than paying for it myself, I'll wait for some other idiot to pay for it. And then, because it's non-excludable, I will enjoy the benefits of that product which has been purchased by others. I'll free ride on their purchasing. Now, 
If this is an option, certainly there will be some percentage of people who will engage in free riding, who would have otherwise paid for the good if they could have been excluded from it. The only way to get access would be to pay for it. But because they don't have to, they don't purchase the good, they don't express demand in the market for that product, and so the quote-unquote true demand for the product is not reflected in the marketplace. And for that reason, free markets for public goods usually severely under-allocate resources for their production. There is not the optimum allocation of resources. Less is, re is allocated than would otherwise be the case, or less is allocated than would be the case if people expressed their demand for the product in some way through a market, for example. In the most extreme case, no resources would be allocated to the production of public goods because everyone would be attempting to free ride. Okay? So if, if uh, you thought to yourself, well, rather than making a contribution to pay for national defence, I'll let other people pay for it and uh, then I will enjoy the benefits of the national defence simply by virtue of being within the borders of the country. Well, that's fine if only you think that, but what if everyone thinks that? In that case, who's paying for the national defence? Nobody. Everyone is waiting for some other idiot to pay for the national defence. So none gets purchased whatsoever. That's the most extreme case.